Hi there, this is Hackrich. Today we are going to start a new series, Buffer Overflow. This is going to be a hands-on series. So before getting into Buffer Overflow or how we could exploit the Buffer Overflow vulnerability, we need to understand how memory will be allocated internally while program is running. So this first video is not going to be a hands-on. Here I'm going to explain how memory will be allocated and other basic thing which is needed to learn the Buffer Overflow. So let's get started. As I said, first let's understand the memory layout. So this is how uh, memory looks like for the process when we run the program. So there are several reasons. So in order to exploit the buffer overflow vulnerability, we need to understand which variable stored in a which region in the memory. So there are two kind of vulner two kind of buffer overflow. One is stack buffer overflow, another one is heap buffer overflow. So stack buffer overflow is little bit easier to exploit compared to heap buffer overflow. So here stack, stack size and heap size is not fixed. So stack grows downwards, that is higher address to lower address. Heap grows from lower address to higher address, that is upward. So coming to the, as I said, there are several reasons. Several reason. So we need to understand which variable will be allocated in a which region. So compared to coming to stack, uh, in stack, uh, temporary and uh, automatic variable and function parameter will be true. So whatever we declared in the function, the local variable, and whatever the parameter we pass to the function will be stored on a stack. Coming to heap, all the dynamically allocated memory, which is using the function called calloc and malloc will be stored on a heap. So all non-initialized global and static variable will be stored in a BSS segment. So if the global and static variable is initialized with some value, then it will be stored on a data segment. And as I said, uh, in BSA segment, uh, non-initialized global and static variable will be stored and it will be initialized with a zero. So in stack segment, it stores the executable instruction. So let's understand uh, with an example, which variable will be allocated in a which region. So here the code is written in C. If you understand C, then fine. If you don't understand C, then stay with me. I will explain each and every line. So coming to first line, in G equal to 10. So here G is a global variable, uh, which, which is initialized with a sum value, which is 10. So because the G is already initialized with a sum value, then the G will be stored on a data segment. So coming to next line, int A equal to 5 and plot B equal to 2.5. This is the local variable for main function. So which is declared in a, inside the main block. So now this A and B will be stored on a stack. So coming to next line static int x. So name itself tells uh, x is a static variable and it is not initialized with any value. So now the x will be stored on a BSA segment but by default the x will be initialized with a 0. So coming to next line int star p. So here the p is a integer pointer. So it is pointing to dynamically allocated memory. So as we discussed in previous slide, so the whatever the memory allocated using the function called malloc and calloc will be allocated dynamically and this dynamic memory will be stored in a heap. So now p is a local variable which is an integer pointer which is pointing to the address which is stored on a heap. So here p is a p will be stored on a stack itself. But P is pointing to the memory which is stored on a heap. So far we discussed about uh, how memory will be allocated for the process when program is running. So in next slide let us discuss how stack frame will be allocated when there is a function call. So don't get overwhelmed by looking at this picture. I will explain uh, each and everything. So we know that stack grows downwards. Uh, that is higher address to that is from higher address to lower address. This is we, this is we discussed in the first slide, right? So here there are two functions. One is temp function, another one is main function. So main function will call the temp function. So whenever there is a function called, a compiler will allocate the stack frame for that call function. Okay. Here, uh, first compiler will push the parameter uh, to the stack. So if there is a parameter to the function, then it will push the parameter to the stack. 
if there is no parameter it will not push anything right okay so in our case temp has a two parameter one is int a another one is int b so compiler will push these parameter in a reverse order so here first it will push the value of b and then it will push the value of a so first it will push the value of b and uh, next it will push the value of a so after that after pushing the parameter it will push the return address so in order to exploit the buffer overflow vulnerability we need to understand what is return address so return address tells that compiler after executing the temp function where control flow should go so which instruction it should execute after completing the temp, temp function so in our case uh, main will call the temp function after executing the temp function it should execute the printf statement right so this instruction address will be stored on a uh, return address okay so after pushing the return address it will push the previous frame pointer address so i will tell you what is previous frame pointer address before that we need to understand uh, there are two kind of register in a stack one is esp another one is ebp esp will always pointing to the top of the stack ebp will be pointing to base of the stack so current frame pointer which is nothing but ebp so before allocating the stack frame or a memory for temp function this ebp was pointing to somewhere here where uh, main function uh, stack frame was uh, stored uh, somewhere here the main function stack frame will be stored uh, i didn't uh, draw here because it will confuse you so i only draw the stack frame of the temp function in reality there will be a main function stack frame here so ebp initially pointing to uh, somewhere here to base of the main function so after allocating the memory for temp function it jumps to this address and uh, it stores the previous frame pointer address which is main main function uh, previous frame pointer address main function frame pointer address and why do we need a previous frame pointer address so let's say after completing the temp function exit temp function this ebp should point jump to previous address right so it cannot remember what was the previous address it was pointing to so now we need that previous pointer sorry previous pointer address so that's why we are storing that previous frame pointer address here after pushing the previous frame pointer address it will push it will allocate the memory for uh, local variable so in temp function there are two local variable one is x and another one is y so it will allocate the enough memory for x and y it does not matter uh, order of the allocation it might allocate the memory for y first then x it does not matter it depends on the compiler okay so now how compiler will uh, access the local variable which is stored on a um, stack all the variable which is stored on a stack it might be a local or it might be a function param parameter right so how how it can access is uh, using ebp because ebp position is fixed right it is always pointing to this address so if we add a 4 byte or if we sorry if we negate the 4 byte because stack grows from higher address to lower address if we negate the 4 byte we will get the address of value of x here i am talking about 32 bit machine if it is 64 bit machine we need to negate 8 byte to get the value of x so this in 32 bit machine this one block refers to 4 byte in 64 bit machine this one block refers to 8 byte so in order to get the address of value of x we will negate the 4 byte from the ebp if we negate the 8 byte we will get the address of value of y so in order to access the function parameter if we add a 8 byte because it is higher address right if we add a 8 byte we will get the value of a if we add another 4 byte 12 byte to the uh, ebp we will get the address of value of b so this is how compiler will access the parameter and also local variable in the stack so this image only uh, considering the only temp function stack frame only temp function perspective in reality there will be a, a main function stack frame and other function stack frame here so uh, in next slide let us discuss stack layout for a function call chain so here main function will call the foo function foo function will call the bar function 
So as we discussed in a previous slide, whenever there is a function call, it will push the parameter first. Same same thing happens. First, it compiler will push the uh, mains param function parameter will be pushed here, and then it will push the return address. Then it will push the previous frame pointer address, and then it compiler will allocate the memory for local variable in the main function. Now main function calls the foo function. Same thing happens. First, it will push the function parameter, and then it will push the return address. So why do we need a return address? So after completing the foo function, what instruction it should execute? Compiler should execute. So that address will be stored here. Then it will push the previous frame pointer address for foo function, which is the previous function main function. Main functions EBP address will be stored here. Now EBP will jump to this address. So now EBP will be pointing to this address. So after that, compiler will allocate the memory for local variable. You know, foo function. So after uh, then, foo function calls the bar function. Same thing happens. First, it will push the parameter to the stack. Then it will push the return address. Then it will push the foo's frame pointer address. Now EBP will jump to this address, and co then compiler will allocate the memory for local variable in a bar function. So after completing the bar function, control flow will go to this stored return address, and EBP now jump to this address. How do EBP get to know that what was the previous address it was pointing to? This is stored here in a stack, right? So it will jump to this address, which is this address. Then, uh, then foo, foo foo function executes its instruction and completes its execution. Now same thing happens. Uh, EBP will jump to this address. So this way, uh, it will complete the all execution. So this is all. Uh, uh, we discussed how memory will be allocated for the process and how stack layout will be for function call so all we discussed now let's get into what is buffer overflow how it happens so what is buffer overflow so basically if we try to put the data to the buffer more than buffer can hold then there will be overflow so as we can see it in the picture uh, there is a glass if I try to pour the water more than glass can hold then there will be overflow right so if I tell it in technical word let's say there is a buffer which has a length x if I try to put the data or if I try to copy the data to the buffer where data has a length more than x then there will be a buffer overflow so in next slide let's discuss with an example So here two function, one is foo function and another one is main function. In main, fun main function, there is a one uh, local variable str. It holds some data. This is definitely longer than 12. And main function calls the foo function. Um, well, as we discussed earlier, uh, whenever there is a function call, uh, compiler will push the parameter to the stack. There is a one parameter in a foo function str that will be pushed into stack and it will push the return address and it will push the previous frame pointer address so earlier uh, ebp will po pointing to somewhere here and now if this address will be pushed to the stack now ebp will jump to this address <coughs> and then uh, compiler will allocate the memory for local variable so in foo function there is a one variable which is buffer which has a length 12 byte and that it will make the memory for it will allocate the memory for local variable which is buffer now what what programmer is trying to do is he is trying to copy the data from str to buffer so basically st string copy what it does is it will copy the data from source to destination here str is the source and buffer is destination the problem here is it does not check the length of the data it simply copies the data from source to destination so because buffer is 12 byte and str is more than 12 byte so now what happens so if now compiler will copy the data from str to buffer so what it does is it will it will copy the data to the buffer because it is more than 12 byte it will keep on copying the data and override the previous frame pointer and again it will keep on copying the data and it will override the return address and so on then it a full function completes its execution so in ideal case what should happen after completing the full function compiler will go to this return address and execute the instruction 
stored in this address but what happened now now we override this return address with by some data now this is not a valid address now compiler will try to patch the instruction stored in this address but this is not a valid address now what happens now compiler will throw the segmentation fault so one thing we can observe here is we can override the return address that means we can control the return address that means we can control the execution flow also right so let's say somewhere in the stack there is a malicious code and we know that address if we override this address by that malicious code address then compiler what it does is it will go to that address and executes that malicious code so that this way if there is a buffer overflow vulnerability we can do that right so this way we can exploit the buffer overflow vulnerability and execute the code what we want so so this is how buffer overflow vulnerability leads to a major problem so far we discussed how memory will be allocated for the process how stack layout will be and now we discussed uh, what is buffer overflow how it happens and in next video we can get into a hands-on session and let's learn how to exploit the buffer overflow and until then stay tuned have a nice day